Looking at the three rooms of the tabernacle, the outer court, the holy place, and the most holy place, they represent God, they represent us, but they also represent times. The writer of Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 8, says that by this, by these rooms, the Holy Spirit indicates that the way into the holy places is not yet opened as long as the first section is still standing, which is symbolic of this present age. So he says these rooms actually represent ages. They represent time periods. When we look at the kingdom of God, we, we have this common phrase that was made uh, more common by George Eldon Ladd, if I remember his name correctly. <laughs> I know the last name of Ladd, L-A-D-D. He wrote about the kingdom of God, and he talked about the, the time of the two ages, or the time of the already and the not yet, where we're living in this present age, but we live in the age to come. And the writer of Hebrews talks about how we have tasted of the powers of the age to come. These three rooms represent these three ages. The outer court actually represents this, the original time period from uh, Adam until the time of Moses. In that time period, worship of God was done by what we did in our bodies. You would bring a sacrifice, a physical sacrifice, and that was worship. Noah was told to build an ark, that was worship. Abraham was told to walk before God, that was worship. Enoch walked with God, that was worship. Worship was defined by what was done in the body, what was, what was accomplished in this physical realm. But when Moses comes, Moses is brought into this present age. That was the age before. This present age is the age of the law, if you will, where we are given the opportunity to worship God with our souls. He, he says that you shall worship the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. Now it's interesting, he doesn't get rid of the first one, he just adds to it. We still worship with our bodies, but now we're, we're also bringing in our mind, we're bringing in our will, we're bringing in our emotions, our soul gets involved in our worship, and it's required to bring the worship that God desires, that God deserves, for our soul to be involved in that process. When Jesus comes, Jesus brings and ushers in the age to come, and we get to live in this age to come. And Jesus tells the woman at the well in Samaria that the time is coming, and now is, when the Father is looking for worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, this is the first time that anything is mentioned of worshiping God with our spirits. The age to come represents this time where we worship him with our spirits, but Jesus didn't get rid of what was already there. He just added to it. Because when he was asked, what's the greatest commandment? He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. We still worship the Lord with our bodies. We worship the Lord with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our wills, and we worship the Lord in the spirit. And this is the time period that we're living in, the, the time of worshiping by the Spirit. We get to walk by the Spirit and so fulfill the potential that God intended from the very beginning that had been hidden. The mystery that Paul talks about of God in his people and the people of God becoming the very dwelling place of God. God tabernacling with his people. Now this is another one of the lessons that we can learn from the Tabernacle of Moses.